if we were to start fresh and articulate the vision for someone trying to modernize their workplace and get from A to B, the journey that we're taking people on is sort of uh, the, what are the basics, what are the core like mindset things that people need to adopt and um, that needs to be sort of organization wide. And then how does that cascade into the different areas and how do you push that further um, beyond what we would describe as the, that foundational stuff. Yeah, and some of the things we're going to talk about are going to be very end user focused. Some of them are going to be leadership focused. Some of it's going to be IT focused, right? We're going to kind of cover all the bases in, in here um, that I think will really do a good job of helping someone who is just starting to think about using that uh, to think about it a little differently maybe than what they have in the past. Sure. The real thing for me is you're turning something from just a cost or an expense, an IT expense, into what can actually be an organizational investment. Yeah, it's a big mindset shift for sure. I'm pulling up our foundations course page because when we talk about where to start, the first module is all about going from a world where you rely on people to translate information between each other, and it's a very person-to-person -person based organization. And while that is doable, it's feasible, like you can run a business that way, what we promote is the concept of instead of only relying on people connecting with each other in that way, how do you store and work on the information in a central way that is organization based instead of tied to a user, whether that be SharePoint or Teams and stuff like that. And we talk about that all in the course quite a bit. So uh, as you said, that part of what we're doing is really just getting everyone all aligned. So I, I gave the thing of, you know, I'm, I'm a new leader in my organization. I've got 100 people maybe in my organization. They all may be coming from different backgrounds about how what they used. Somebody used Gmail on their last job. Somebody used, um, you know, spreadsheets for everything. Uh, you know, everybody has their own uh, different background. And that course or what you would do if you did that, if I did that myself, is just resetting and saying everybody's got the same baseline. Everybody's got the same understanding of why we're buying these tools, what we expect to get out of them. And one thing before we go too far is none of what we talk about in that course is like super private things that we haven't talked about before. Like if you're, we're 48 episodes into this podcast. If you've listened to them all, you probably get what we're talking about when it's, when we're talking about these things. Our goal was to try to package it up into something that was just a couple hours for someone to take. But don't expect that we're like, keeping a bunch of secrets in, in that course. Yep. Uh, we, we, we try to share it uh, as much as we can. Yep. Back to you for like what, yeah, take me on what's beyond foundations. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go uh, when you get, every, now you've got everybody on the same page and they know what's gonna be, what's about to be happening. One way, uh, and it's probably one of the first things that I would do, it's one of the first things that we do when we did when we started to grow and started having to have more meetings spend money and effort on creating a great meeting experience. Uh, have rooms dedicated to meetings, have technology, so monitors and uh, uh, conference room equipment that allows you, to, uh, an employee, to step in, schedule a meeting in a room, walk into that meeting, start the meeting with no barriers, turn on meeting recording, and have it transcribe very effort, effortlessly. And that's just about meetings. We also talk about doing it for uh, people who are at home, right? Uh, we give all of our employees a stipend to go buy a good headset um, and to put a good mic at home. You know, if you have, if you have employees that are working remote, working from home, uh, give, them the, give them the resources to have a nice uh, webcam, right? Yeah. Uh, that can make a huge difference in how work gets done. Um, and it can seem silly and it can seem like that's not that big of a deal. All I need is my phone. Uh, there's no question you need more, right? Uh, you want to have some level of quality. You don't need to spend $1,000 per employee or per user trying to make it, you know, phenomenal. Uh, but, you know, you want something nice. Yeah. Something like that pays off. Is that like it's nice for the employee to have that? Right, they might f feel good about that, but that pays off for the business. It yeah. pays off for the it pays off for your customers because yep. they're getting better audio quality, better video quality. Yep. All of those things are are happening, and yep. that has like not having to ask somebody to repeat themselves or figure out their camera situation or whatever that is. 
goes a long way. And even if you're an organization that's focused on in-person meetings, you're still going to do a whole bunch that's not. Yep. Like you just cannot get around it. You couldn't get around it before COVID and before the pandemic, et cetera. You really can't get around it now, right? Like uh, you're going to have it. So set up something that's nice. Okay. So we talk about digital tools and then bring it back into the real world with you kind of actually need some equipment to facilitate this yep. beyond a laptop yep. usually. What's next? What should someone be looking at investing in? Yeah, so I mean, the very next thing, like let's say you got your meeting stuff sorted out or maybe at the same time is probably what I would do. You know, then we're talking Teams. Like Teams is a cornerstone of all of this stuff. You need to get that set up and working and, and doing what you want. Um, you know, I'm not talking about spending a ton of time, you know, analyzing and planning and big rollout. Start following the guidelines. Create teams for projects. Create teams for, for, for groups of people that work together. Start having them focus on using that stuff. You're going to see a transformation in your business by doing such, such a thing. You're going to see a drop in direct message chats. You're going to see a drop in emails. You're going to see uh, an improvement in people's just awareness of what's going on, collaboration, uh, creativity will go like that. You'll just see that stuff happening. I would definitely focus on that as my next main focus from a, a, a a Microsoft 365 technology uh, uh, stack. Yeah, yep. and I feel like what you're saying paints it a little simply of like, set this up and you'll see these benefits. There's a little more nuance than that because there's some habits, there's some, uh, you know, causing people to work differently than what they're used to working that takes some time and effort to get over. And so I'm, again, just painting it as it's not like a snap your fingers and it's there. It's something that if they have the right mindset and approach and start to work on communicating this way, that is what enables a lot of the other teams, the parts of teams to work really well. Yeah. So having that mindset that you get out of something like the foundations course and letting that sink in, but then the, like maybe one of the next things would be implementing some governance in your environment so that you have that structure so that people aren't tempted to go off the rails and come up with their own mindset, right? They're, so you use some governance and structure to kind of keep people inside, in, between the ditches, right? Yeah, yeah, which kind of leads into the next part that I would, I would focus on, which is, you know, IT governance, right? Here uh, comes the compliance <laughs> uh, team. It's, it's not so much that, it's that uh, I want my teams, my, my employees, to have a consistent experience and have a quality experience, right? By locking uh, everything down and, yeah. <laughs> Mitch, 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 Mitch. There's definitely much less to experience uh, once it's all locked down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, now, guys. Uh, there's a lot of tools within Microsoft 365 that allow you to protect your business and to protect your data, protect your devices that a lot of organizations are not taking advantage of. Uh, either because they aren't at the right licensing level, so some of it is a cost thing. Hey, I got to buy more to be able to get this. Some of it is just not understanding, right? Yeah, you'd be surprised how many times we hear something like a, a client saying, well, I want to make sure my stuff is secure, and they don't have something like device-specific policies set up where yep. someone from any computer can log into their account, yeah, and they're, they're like, like, why would I ever need that? I only ever use my computer. Can we set that up? And their IT is like, well, what do you mean? I have alerts set up yeah. on if someone else logged. And it's like, no, we're trying to prevent something here. So let's create those policies. Yep. And it doesn't have to be super um, complex. It doesn't have to be no. extravagant. And the big point that I'm trying to make is Microsoft 365 allows that. Yeah, and yeah. it's definitely a thing that I would consider, look at, try to utilize, investigate to whatever level you're comfortable with. Spend a little time to understand what you want to get out of it from that from that side, the compliance, governance, security end of it, and work with your MSP or work with your IT department to maximize that as much as you can without impacting people, right? Like, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's recap. We went through foundations. We talked about what's beyond, and one of those things is physical. IT, physical technology to help with meetings and stuff like that. And then you talked about from a, an IT compliance, you know, governance standpoint, yep. what else is there? Yeah, so the next big one, and I think it might be, you know, the big remaining one is intranet, SharePoint, communication sites. Um, you know, we've talked about it a lot in the past. You know, once you get everybody collaborating and doing the everyday work uh, regularly, the next thing you need to do is be able to 
communicate about that, uh, about what's going on in the organization, how things work in your organization. Yeah, and we've talked about in previous episodes, like what is an intranet, iterative yep. intranet, stuff like that. That stuff is all still relevant and, and good. And the last thing, very last thing, uh, that I would definitely, and it's new, it's not something I would usually recommend up until very recently, this last spring, honestly, I would spend time thinking about what impact AI and Copilot can have on your business. Um, you know, there is a free version of Copilot. You, your employees can get tremendous value by just leveraging that, just the free version. Uh, people can get even more value out of, out of uh, the paid version, uh, but I would look for specific use cases, thinking about that. And then there's the whole concept of agentic AI and all of that. Like the, this data that you're building by putting things in Teams and putting it in SharePoint and having all of these tools that you've just been working towards, all of the, uh, the stuff we've been talking about up until now, now can get unlocked uh, more, even more value by using AI and Copilot with that data or without that data um, to just take it to the next level. And if you have everything in someone's OneDrive, that's not you can't work. get access to that, and it's then not work. the agent won't be able to see that. So it's it, it all plays together and uh, is sort of a happy accident that happened to us where we're teaching about get everything central, and now there's all of a sudden tools that can be really know, smart. And we so, were on this train for me. We knew yeah. AI was going to take over the world, and we've been Man planning on it for 20 years. Manifested AI yeah. in his brain, yeah. <laughs> the takeaway there is don't expect to pay for Copilot and turn it loose on your organizational content if it's all locked away and personal right. storage, right. right? Yep. This is the thing is if you're doing all of these things, you're leveraging your subscriptions great. Like you're going to find tons of value. There's going to be no question about the spend that you're you're doing on these tools and the value that it's bringing for your organization. That does get us to the end of what we're talking about today, the topics. We're interested to know kind of what you think about this maturity, this model of, of what is beyond for someone who is trying to adopt these Microsoft tools. So we would love your feedback. We have a link, like I said, bulb.digital slash feedback. We'd love to know what you think about this episode. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys sitting down to chat today. Another good one. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Bye, I'll see ya. Bye.